welcome, my name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be covering the basics of linear regression in Stata. So today's tutorial here is just covering the most essential things for you to run regressions. That is, we're not going to go into very sophisticated subcommands or sophisticated type of regressions, just the standard linear regression that you may have been taught in your very first econometrics course. So what data are we going to use? Let's just use the example data set stored in Stata. So the one that is called auto in this case, press use. Now I've loaded in a nice data set from which I can make some nice linear regressions. We're going to start off with the simplest type of all, just what we call a simple linear regression. That is, we only include one dependent variable. So one Y, of course, that's always the case. And we include only one independent variable or right hand side variable or whatever you wish to call it. So, for, the, for instance, we would like to see price as a function of, say, miles per gallon as a starting point, right? So what we're going to do, or what we can do, is that we can run rec, which is the base command of this, and we can simply run price as miles per gallon. The syntax is pretty straightforward. You always put in your first your y variable, your dependent variable, followed by any number of independent variables. This example here will produce just a simple linear regression where we can see price here regressed on MPG miles per gallon. What do we notice? A few things here first. We got 74 observations. We get our R squared and adjusted R squared. We also get the coefficient here, which you see there's a negative relationship between the two variables. We see the standard of 53 roughly, producing a T value of minus four and a half, resulting in a highly significant coefficient. We usually consider 1%, 5%, and 10% of the p-values. So any p-value below that, we would say it is significant at that given level. For example, here we observe that we have a coefficient, so the magnitude of minus 238, round up to 239, say, which means that for each additional miles per gallon for this particular car, the price would go down by 239, rounded, of course, US dollars, C to this paribus, or everything else held constant. Well, in this case here, we only have one indicator, so not that important, but still very important to mention. How do I say it's significant? Well, we see the p-value just below any of the levels we consider, which was 10, 5, and 1%. Remember, the null hypothesis is always tested on the regression here is whether this coefficient here is significantly different from zero. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis that this coefficient is equal to zero, and we say that we find a coefficient to be significantly different from zero. That's actually how we would do this. Now, let's just extend this regression now to be a multiple linear regression. That is that I add additional variables to explain price. We start by just regress, price, and miles per gallon. And now, suppose now that I would like to add the weight of the car here as a regressor. So this is in pounds. So we simply just add weight this way to the regression and press enter. You see, it follows the same way. But now we notice some different results, of course. Not going into, going into the specifics here, but we do see the miles per gallon all of a sudden is not significant anymore. Whereas the weight is, and it's highly significant even at even 1%. Not going into specifics here, but we just show an example of multiple linear regression, right? So there's different things we can do with these kind of things. First, let's take a look now at the help file. This always gives you the syntax. It gives you some models and also how we can change the standard errors reported. We can, of course, also use many other functions and options that is described here. And even when you're lucky, it will always give you some examples here to get you going as well, which is very nice. What we're going to be doing here is look further up here in the syntax. We see here that you have the dependent variable first, followed by any number of independent. You can also, of course, also make a regression to the mean by not having any dependent variables. The constant is always included per default. So you really have to specify no con in this case here to suppress the constant term. We're going to be looking more into the if condition here. This means you can also regress on a subsample directly in your call for the regression. And we're going to look at one of the options to change the standard errors, for instance, to robust to check for, or well, to account for any potential issues with heteroskedasticity. Let's start with the if condition. Suppose now we want to run the same regression, but now only for foreign cars. That is, the dummy variable foreign is equal to one. We will write rec price again, followed by miles per gallon, 
Wait, and now we put in the if. And now we want foreign to be equal to one. Notice again here the double equals to because we're checking an equivalence. Now I run the regression only on the subsample for foreign cars. Likewise, I can also run it for only domestic cars. We could also obtain a very similar result by just adding this as a dummy variable to the regression, but sometimes it would be preferable to just run the regression on each of the subsamples to see how these coefficients would change. We do, for instance, see for domestic cars, miles per gallon is very different than miles per gallon when we talk about foreign cars. So that's how we would do this, for instance, just to show on the basis of all these things, right? So now, finally, let's just take a look at how to, you know, include heteroscedastic robust standards or heteroscedastic robust standards. Such a long word, huh? So let's go back to the multiple linear regression or even simpler. Let's go back to the simple linear regression we started with that one we have here. And now we can, of course, just add the option comma robust. This will produce the robust standard errors and it can even be seen here. Why is this so interesting? Let's compare that with the original regression we ran. So you can see here, I got the robust results up here and the regular results here. Please note, you probably learned this in class, but just to say it once and for all, the coefficients do not change. Of course, you're only changing the standard errors. But of course, you also change the t values because, well, coefficient divided by standards is t values and consequently your p values. Remember, if your model suffers from heteroscedasticity and you don't control for it, you might have, well, misleading standard errors and therefore conduct incorrect inference when you talk about hypothesis testing, right? So that is no good. In this case here, the conclusions won't change. They're still highly significant. They don't change too much. So if you would che check for heteroscedasticity, I do not believe we would find much evidence. However, it's always a good idea to just add comma robust. Why? Because even if there's no problem of heteroscedasticity, asymptotically, two types of standards are the same. Therefore, it seems to be a very good idea, unless you're told otherwise, at least in class, right? But that is all I have for you to now. So we showed simple linear regression. We added the multiple linear regression up here. And we also showed for each subsamples with if condition, foreign and domestic in this case. And of course, we also showed how to control robust standard errors. This covers just some of the basics. There's many other things out there for the regular regression command. But I hopefully, well, hopefully this will get you started. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time. <laughs>